This is section 15 of The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax, read by John Greenman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Character of a Trimmer. Conclusion. Read by John Greenman. To conclude, our trimmer is so fully satisfied of the truth of those principles by which he is directed in reference to the public that he will neither be bald, threatened, loft nor drunk out of them and instead of being converted by the arguments of his adversaries to their opinions he is very much confirmed in his own by them he professeth solemnly that were it in his power to choose he would rather have his ambition bounded by the commands of a great and wise master than let it range with a popular license though crowned with success yet he cannot commit such a sin against the glorious thing called liberty nor let his soul stoop so much below itself as to be content without repining to have his reason wholly subdued or the privilege of acting like a sensible creature torn from him by the imperious dictates of unlimited authority in what hand soever it happens to be placed what is there in this that is so criminal as to deserve the penalty of that most singular apothegm a trimmer is worse than a rebel what do angry men ail to rail so against moderation doth it not look as if they were going to some very scurvy extreme that is too strong to be digested by the more considering part of mankind these arbitrary methods besides the injustice of them are god be thanked very unskilful too for they fright the birds by talking so loud from coming into the nets that are laid for them and when men agree to rifle a house they seldom give warning or blow a trumpet but there are some small statesmen who are so full charged with their own expectations that they cannot contain and kind heaven by sending such a seasonable curse upon their undertakings hath made their ignorance an antidote against their malice some of these cannot treat peaceably yielding will not satisfy them they will have men by storm there are others that must have plots to make their service more necessary and have an interest to keep them alive since they are to live upon them and persuade the king to retrench his own greatness so as to shrink into the head of a party which is the betraying him into such an unprincely mistake and to such a wilful diminution of himself that they are the last enemies he ought to allow himself to forgive such men if they could would prevail with the sun to shine only upon them and their friends and to leave all the rest of the world in the dark this is a very unusual monopoly and may come within the equity of the law which maketh it treason to imprison the king when such unfitting bounds are put to his favor and he confined to the narrow limits of a particular set of men that would enclose him these honest and only loyal gentlemen if they may be allowed to bear witness for themselves make a king their engine and degrade him into a property at the very time that their flattery would make him believe they paid divine worship to him besides these there is a flying squadron on both sides that are afraid the world should agree small dabblers in conjuring that raise angry apparitions to keep men from being reconciled like wasps that fly up and down buzz and sting to keep men unquiet but these insects are commonly short-lived creatures and no doubt in a little time mankind will be rid of them they were giants at least who fought once against heaven but for such pygmies as these to contend against it is such a provoking folly that the insolent bunglers ought to be laughed and hissed out of the world for it they should consider there is a soul in that great body of the people which may for a time be drowsy and unactive but when the leviathan is roused it moveth like an angry creature 
and will neither be convinced nor resisted the people can never agree to show their united powers till they are extremely tempted and provoked to it so that to apply cupping glasses to a great beast naturally disposed to sleep and to force the tame thing whether it will or no to be valiant must be learnt out of some other book than machiavel who would never have prescribed such a preposterous method it is to be remembered that if princes have law and authority on their sides the people on theirs may have nature which is a formidable adversary duty justice religion nay even humane prudence too biddeth the people suffer anything rather than resist but uncorrected nature where e'er it feels the smart will run to the nearest remedy men's passions in this case are to be considered as well as their duty let it be never so strongly enforced for if their passions are provoked they being as much a part of us as our limbs they lead men into a short way of arguing that admitteth no distinction and from the foundation of self-defence they will draw inferences that will have miserable effects upon the quiet of a government our trimmer therefore dreads a general discontent because he thinketh it differeth from a rebellion only as a spotted fever doth from the plague the same species under a lower degree of malignity it worketh several ways sometimes like a slow poison that hath its effects at a great distance from the time it was given sometimes like dry flax prepared to catch at the first fire or like seed in the ground ready to sprout upon the first shower in every shape tis fatal and our trimmer thinketh no pains or precaution can be so great as to prevent it in short he thinketh himself in the right grounding his opinion upon that truth which equally hateth to be under the oppressions of wrangling sophistry of the one hand or the short dictates of mistaken authority on the other our trimmer adoreth the goddess truth though in all ages she hath been scurvily used as well as those that worshipped her tis of late become such a ruining virtue that mankind seemeth to be agreed to commend and avoid it yet the want of practice which repealeth the other laws hath no influence upon the law of truth because it hath root in heaven and an intrinsic value in itself that can never be impaired she showeth her greatness in this that her enemies even when they are successful are ashamed to own it nothing but powerful truth hath the prerogative of triumphing not only after victories but in spite of them and to put conquest herself out of countenance she may be kept under and suppressed but her dignity still remaineth with her even when she is in chains falsehood with all her impudence hath not enough to speak ill of her before her face such majesty she carrieth about her that her most prosperous enemies are fain to whisper their treason all the power upon earth can never extinguish her she hath lived in all ages and let the mistaken zeal of prevailing authority christen any opposition to it with what name they please she maketh it not only an ugly and unmannerly but a dangerous thing to persist she hath lived very retired indeed nay some time so buried that only some few of the discerning part of mankind could have a glimpse of her with all that she hath eternity in her she knoweth not how to die and from the darkest clouds that shade and cover her she breaketh from time to time with triumph for her friends and terror to her enemies our trimmer therefore inspired by this divine virtue thinketh fit to conclude with these assertions that our climate is a trimmer between that part of the world where men are roasted and the other where they are frozen that our church is a trimmer between the frenzy of platonic visions and the lethargic ignorance of popish dreams that our laws are trimmers 
between the excess of unbounded power and the extravagance of liberty not enough restrained that true virtue hath ever been thought a trimmer and to have its dwelling in the middle between the two extremes that even god almighty himself is divided between his two great attributes his mercy and his justice in such company our trimmer is not ashamed of his name and willingly leaveth to the bold champions of either extreme the honor of contending with no less adversaries than nature religion liberty prudence humanity and common sense end of the conclusion of the character of a trimmer read by john greenman